practice. Land, I'm ready. How you doing, David? Hey, how are you, Darren? I'm good. good. Glad to hear it. How's Hawaii this time of year? Well, it's getting hotter. This is the hottest time of year, obviously. Um, it's usually pretty temperate and trade winds and all that stuff. So, I mean, the only thing I complain about is a little bit of heat. But uh, it, luckily, people are able to go to the beach still. You know, our, our numbers are pretty low uh, on the virus. So, uh, so what is hot in Hawaii? What is hot in Hawaii? I mean, I, I really can't complain. It's like uh, 90s or something, you know, at most. I, oh. I could never live. I could never live in Arizona. I would die. <laughs> <laughs> well, Texas, we I think we had like a couple of weeks of straight 105 to 110 degrees. Uh, I couldn't do it, man. <laughs> but then during winter, we'll have like negative past zero, like negative 14. So. Uh, just shows that, just shows how weak I am. <laughs> you guys are tough. Well, you know. Have you been? The, you guys have been to Hawaii, Darren. Chris? All right, hold on, guys. Hey, guys, this is Darren with Unknown Comics. We are live with David Nakayama. Uh, he did the wonderful X-Men 11. Uh, we also have bringing with you street-level hero, JP or John Paul. Uh, we're going to talk about the X-Men 11 cover uh, and also show off the secret variant. So, David, why don't you tell us about yourself first? Uh, hey, everybody. Glad to be here. Uh, if you don't know me, I am an artist from Hawaii. i uh, been uh, in and out of the comic and games industries for, for years and years, and most recently just been really working hard on covers for places like Marvel and uh, more recently some DC stuff. Uh, but you might know me best as a comic artist, uh, comic cover artist, so I'm very glad to contribute uh, something to my favorite book, X-Men. I love X-Men. That's the reason I got into uh, comics and art in the first place, so any chance I have to come back to X-Men is a good day. That's awesome. Uh, John Paul, why don't you say who you are real quick? I'll do it real quick because we're here for David. Uh, my name is John Paul, uh, owner of Street Level Hero, and that's better known, that's Spider-Man booth. Um, basically, we're comics and streetwear, and we've been doing variants with unknown comics for the last few months. Uh, let's get to David. <laughs> so, so before we get into X-Men, you've been doing a comic series with Sanctum Sanctorum with cereal boxes. I ah, have yes. to know, how did this come to be? Who came <laughs> up with cereal box? Well, I got to give the original credit to Sanctum themselves. They had a pretty strong idea to begin with. You know, they had the general idea of doing cereal box variants to begin with. They had the character lined up. They generally had a little sketch of what they wanted to do. And so... So the first one, at least, I felt like my job was just to try to pack as many visual jokes in as I could and add to it and polish it and, you know, bring that idea to life. And as we've continued, now we're on the, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, like the seventh or eighth of these at this point. Um, I think they trust me more and more to come up with gags. So sometimes I'll just get a, you know, like, hey, this is the comic, this is the character, maybe we have an idea or two, and then I'll pitch a bunch of names and ideas and you know, the, I, I think they only work when they are full of gags and they're fresh, but also, you know, very character specific. So uh, as long as that's true, we can probably keep doing those for a while. <laughs> yeah, the Batman Adventure ones uh, pretty much remind me of everything about my childhood. Yes, perfect. <laughs> Saturday morning, Batman on TV, eating cereal. So you're, you've gotten your point across. Excellent. So. Well, that's that's what matters. If it hits you right in the nostalgia, I, th I think that's the best we can possibly do with it. That's awesome. So let's get around to X Men. So it's gotten a lot of a lot of a lot of attention. Was it comic book resources? Yeah. Because there's been so much speculation about what kind of love situation the island is. What kind of love island? You know, <laughs> oh, is. you mean the, the two islands getting together in X-Men 2, that stuff? <laughs> oh, yeah. Even the islands are breeding, so who knows? So <laughs> That'd be quite a variant cover. <laughs> so I noticed on Twitter, you're familiar with the Grant Morrison run. Did you like it? Very much, yeah. I, I, I've been reading X-Men since the early 90s. Uh, on and off, but mostly on. 
And for me, there are some standout runs. So definitely that, that Jim Lee Claremont run is what got me interested in the thing in the first place. Right. And then Matt Herrera coming in was a, a worthy successor. I really like that stuff. And then um, much later, I guess we have things like, uh, you know, Grant Morrison on new X-Men, which brought in a lot of the elements I really, really like about X-Men now, such as, you know, Emma Frost being not just a mustache twirling villain, but a, you know, an interesting and sort of uh, morally gray member of the team. So right. I fully credit Morrison with making that the case. Although I guess you can make a case that she was starting to become more heroic in, in uh, Generation X as well. But I really think it happened for me in, in Morrison's run. So that was critical uh, for me as, as a fan. And then more recently, I really, really genuinely, not just saying this, I really like the Hickman, Hickman run, like uh, as a reader. I really like the House of X, Powers of X, and the stuff that's come after and look forward to it every month. So yeah, great, great chance to work on anything related to that. So are you pretty excited about the Ten of Swords event coming? Yeah, what? I mean, I am. I don't know what it is yet. It, they've been a little bit, uh, and I haven't got the free comic book day issue yet. I haven't had a chance to go this week, but um, I love the creators involved. And, uh, you know, I just don't know what it's about just yet. So we'll, we'll uh, I'm looking forward to it. Cautiously optimistic. Hey, your name's on our list for some covers for that. So, yay. Oh! Well, you know, you know, I've said it like three times in this interview, like how much I like the X Men, so I'm um, down. It's it's a lot of books. It's 22 books in total as a series. Yeah, it includes preludes, tie-ins, I guess all that jazz. So it's yeah, a good series. Good and, series. And guess who's doing all 22 issues as exclusives? Yeah. Uh, you guys? Yeah. You guys, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. How did anybody? Else? Hear- I understand there's like an apocalypse team of villains, a bunch of brand new guys that were introduced in a Pepper LaRoz story in a free comic book day issue, but that's about as much as I know. Not so much apparently apocalypse like like they did in the 90s, but it's like the original apocalypse horseman. Apocalypse is kind of, I guess, taken over again in some way. I don't know. Mm. We'll see. So maybe what they should have done in that movie, huh? Hmm. Right. <laughs> maybe so. So, um, so let's get to the X-Men 11 cover that you did. Um, of course, the inspiration for that was J. Scott Campbell, which I saw that he, he even gave awesome recognition on Twitter. Chris is about to show it off, I think. It, does, it so, doesn't get better than that when, when one of your heroes says something about the work. I mean, like, we're doing this as a tribute to that work. So how much better can it be if, if the original guy says something nice about it? I, I was really honored that he would say that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, and J. Scott Campbell's would be considered a modern legend in the comic industry. I mean, no question. 30, 30 plus years in and just so many iconic, beautiful covers. Um, so we were we were planning this and we were we we knew your art style. I was like you would, you know, it was just one of those. This would be the perfect time to do this. Homage. <laughs> yes. Yes. <So. laughs> Because I, I love your pinup stuff that you do. And I know Marvel doesn't do a lot of pinup stuff. But I love your pinup stuff that you've done for the James Bond and Zinoscope and all of that. So it's just, I was like, Thank you, it's like the perfect place to, to do a semi-pinup style cover. I mean, so. for, for me, it's, I, that's what kind of what I got into comics for, you know, like uh, the guys I, I've really respected as artists. Uh, here we go. There it is. Hey, there it is. Yeah. Yes, the the guys I respect as artists uh, the longest, you know, Jim Lee to start with, and then Adam Hughes and Campbell, like, I think one of the things that impressed me so much, not just their draftsmanship and their storytelling, but was their ability to draw beautiful heroines. Um, it just hooked me right in right away. It just really appealed to me. And so, you know, f- f- all I've been doing for years is trying to learn how they did that, you know, <laughs> in right. a way. Um, so a lot of my artistic DNA and my influences, uh, come from those guys. And so, so pinup is very much a part of that. And any chance I get to draw a super heroine is, is a good opportunity. Um, especially if it's like a character that people, that people are invested in, like Emma Frost. It's just like, to me, this is like the perfect confluences of everything I care about. Right. And the Emma Frost, you know, where you said the Grant Morrison run really did, like, fleshed her out i actually liked the 
the the Josh Whedon run with her. Oh that yeah, good call. Um, see, that was where because I wasn't the biggest fan of the Grant Morrison run. I hated the secondary <laughs> mutation things they did. And I don't know. It was just too weird for me. After I, I'm one of those people that are like resistant to change. He's a purist. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so, but I I love the Astonishing X Men run with uh, that Josh Whedon did or however you pronounce his first name. So, I but. Should- I feel bad not mentioning it. That's up there as my one of my favorites as well. There's actually a scene in it where they're sitting on a tiny hologram of Hawaii, you know, <laughs> which made me laugh so hard. <laughs> so, um, what was like? What was your favorite part about developing this? Before we get to the secret cover, what was your favorite part about the drawing part of this cover? Mm. Well, you know, whenever you're doing an homage, I think the the trick is how do you balance w- making it uh, look like an homage, like keeping what was cool about it to begin with, but then like also not just tracing it or copying it directly, like what can you change about it or add to it without disrupting like the original vibe that made it cool. And so in this case, uh, careful observers might notice that Cyclops's hands are a little different and Jean, Gr- I mean, sorry, uh, Emma's leg pose is a little different and Jean's pose is, is quite different from how Mary Jane was in the in the original and that was just to to mix it up a little and and give you something fresh in addition to the you know the great composition that really can't be beat that that Campbell brought. Um, also I tried to put a lot of painted textural detail into it that maybe wasn't there originally the original colors I love them um, but they're from like the early 2000s and I think the the technology was even a little bit limited at the time now I have the benefit of every trick in the photoshop cookbook mm-hmm. so I wanted to make this look as modern as possible on top of all the rest of it yeah the colors are great they pop yeah and wow. that's so. and I agree with that like colors today to colors back then there's just there's no comparison between the two you can do so many more so things. this is amazing um, so thank is you, thank it you. pure digital? Is there original? Um, <laughs> this, this, so recently I have been getting more into originals and this would have been a great candidate for that, but it just so happened that this was happening right as the pandemic was really starting to crush us. So right. I was, I was being safe here. I wanted to do a digital, which is my comfort zone. And, uh, had it been another time, I might've done this one. To, you know original to start with but no, in this case no just digital oh man I mean, that would have been an amazing uh amazing yeah record. so let me see i have it on my desk i actually kept it out. hold on where are you at i have that robe that you you drew me that i'm going to hang up in the new office excellent I think, <laughs> I think it's floating around somewhere so that it. was a good one that was oh, a good one. It still, it still gets a lot of attention whenever I repost it on Instagram. People always uh, tell me they, they like the hair. <laughs> right. You can't get better than the 90s style rogue hair. So Right? I love the way Jim Lee drew it. I always try to capture that curly look. So, so we're about to reveal the secret variant. Is there anything you want to uh, throw in there before we show it off? Because I really do think it, it sets the perfect mood for Good. this particular cover set? Oh, a couple of things. Like one has been, it, it, I haven't done a secret variant before. So when I told people about that, it's been very fun, very interesting on Instagram and Twitter to for people to speculate about what it might be. You know, it, it's ranged from, you know, uh, historical couples to total flights of fancy and then also, you know, like uh, other ideas that would have been maybe equally as good. So it, it, it reminded me how many cool soap opera romantic moments have appeared in X-Men over the years and would have made, you know, for good covers as well. Uh, but especially in light of X-Force 10, uh, I'm really glad we went with the pair that we went with for this. So uh, I... I didn't know that that was going to happen, but it feels like this is really timely, and it almost feels like it could have been, been the cover for that issue. <laughs> and, and it's a little bit. We didn't know either. So, I mean, this yeah. 
came out like last week. This so uh, this article that you're going to understand in a second once we show the cover. But yeah, yeah, we, we had no idea either. It just kind of made sense, which is great for the issue. So, I, you know, like I, I think for us, we we all collectively pick this just because it's you know it's been a thing in the fandom forever not because we knew about x-force 10 or whatever um well i mean he, I, go back to the original x-men trilogy of movies it was always a back and forth of wolverine loves gene and gene loves cyclops and i guess we're sharing it. That's <laughs> good. all right it. here we go guys <laughs> this is the reveal of the secret variant it's awesome it plays into everything that describes the relationship of well these four characters so Chris very Gibbs. timely and this will be a virgin cover only there is no trade dress um so and I, I forgot to tell you why he's switching everything around we are almost sold out on our end on uh, the virgin oh my god of uh the g or the cyclops emma so we're almost sold out I know Street Thank Level Hero still has copies, but we've got about a little over 100 copies left, and we're out. Wow, that's fantastic news. Thank you, guys, if you're listening, for supporting this. Really appreciate that support. I love doing these, and it doesn't happen without you guys. Oh, I'm seeing something happening. <laughs> Closer. Oh, no. Maybe. <laughs> Chris is just killing oh, us. With it. There it is. So. Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> no is this what you guys no guessed? Question. Did everyone predict this would be the secret cover? I know some did and some did not. I thought it might have been um, other characters. Some people got it right, I believe, though, for sure. Yep. This is awesome. It almost, it almost feels like Gene's Revenge. You know, like the uh, if the first one is Cyclops maybe upsetting Gene a little bit. This is like, oh yeah, Cyclops. <laughs> well, there was a, there was an uncanny X-Men run and right when Claremont was either coming back or going out where it had like an intense, like Gene kissing Wolverine cover. I'm trying mm. to remember what it is, but it was just one of those, like there's always just been random kissing covers for the X-Men. You know, there's, <laughs> there's other covers out there. Um, a lot there of are a few. Like one of the covers I really want to do a homage to is uh, X Men 24, which is the iconic Kubert Gambit Rogue cover. Yes. Which was one of the ones that was up in the air for this one. Right. But we decided to do this instead because of just how iconic this image is. So it was a good choice. I think um, so. there's there's definitely a long tradition of of soap opera who is kissing who x-men covers um but i don't i don't believe i've ever seen anyone um borrow campbell's composition for an homage uh with the x-men i don't know if we got there first but this is a this feels pretty fresh to me yeah i don't i don't think so either i don't i think there's been a few campbell covers that's been homage but most of them don't make it to the x-men um, which I find weird because, you know, the X-Men in the 90s and early 2000s was the best-selling book Marvel had, you know, and then over the last 10 years, it's just kind of been, all right, it's the X-Men, just put them down there with the Avengers. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not, it, yeah. it, so it's been I really, really nice over the last year that Hickman has brought them back into such a, a light of, a spotlight. I mean, yeah. I, I think that might be um, due to movie movie rights and things like that you know well yeah because at one point like disney canceled all licenses of any product that could be made that related to x-men or fantastic four so nobody else can yeah um and they even killed the fantastic four for how long what two years three years there was no fantastic four book yeah right um, so i'm glad that 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 um marital dispute is over and they decided to bring it all together like the Simpsons said they would. And now <laughs> we have prosperity again. Yeah, so. I mean, when I read back in the 90s heavily, uh, I definitely thought X-Men was definitely the best title and the most interesting. You know, it was just always so 
Ah, uh, nice. Just engaging, you know, like, and I think he'll come back to that because their storyline is just better than everybody else's. Well, I know I'm a Spider Man guy. I've always liked Spider Man, but I've always I bought the Spider Man comics to to collect, but I would read all the X Men stories and be like, oh crap, oh who's the X Trader? Oh man, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It was it was super <laughs> engaging back then. I always felt like uh, X Men was like the flagship Marvel book, and like whoever was drawing it was like the artist that you wanted to be, and that mm -hmm. that was it. Just seemed true for artist after artist uh, for a long time. It was like Jim Lee and Portacio, and then you know Matarera. I was like one after another for the longest time. When I was a kid, I was like, there's no question in my mind. I I wanted to be the artist on Uncanny X Men. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, yeah, the, the, the history of artists on that book is insane from, uh, I mean, John Romita Jr. Um, to Arthur Adams to Jim Lee, Liefeld has worked on it. Um, and then you get into uh, Will Scio, I think I'm pronounced, I, I know how to spell his name, but you know, he Potassio? did that. I think it's yeah, Potassio. You know, Potassio. said it so long, I can't even think of what it um, is. <laughs> you know, then, Joe, Joe Mad, of obviously. So there's been, again, I agree. There's been so many amazing artists. And then there was that one issue where they did that Nuff said thing back in the early 2000s with no words. Mm. And the art was so terrible in that book that you couldn't even tell the characters apart. So Marvel mm. had to send like an amendment in the next issue to actually tell you what the story was. So, oh, wow. Really? Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, that was probably the worst idea of an editor ever. Hey, let's just do an entire month where all of our books have no words. <laughs> so the art speak for the story. So. Well, you did have that that Snake Eyes GI Joe book that people like canonize or, or like or, or really value. So I'm sure I, I know it can be done well, but it's probably not easy. Yeah, I mean maybe in one because I mean Hawkeye Ten I believe had had that as well where they did the the pizza dog where it was mm -hmm. all about the dog's perspective of the world. <laughs> uh, that's actually a valuable book, but uh, um, but that was the doc's perspective, so there's almost no words, no talking. So, but that just yeah, it just was weird. To see every book Marvel did, no words. So, by the way, I did find that by the way. Why we were, yay, yeah, yes, that's the piece that uh, you gave me in San Francisco two years ago. Wow, it's been a little while, but uh. Still holds up. Still one of my favorites. I think I've ever drawn of her. Oh yeah. So it's gonna go get framed here eventually and go in the new office when the new office is done being constructed. Excellent. I think I saw on your website somewhere that you had like framed and posted a wall of some art or something. It looked like things were coming together. Uh, we're getting there. We have uh, we hired a contractor to. We're putting together an event center so we can bring guys like you over here and do big signings. Oh my um, gosh, how cool. Um, without having to go to shows all the time. So, because uh, it's hard to do when you have as many kids between me and Chris. We, between the two of us, have eight kids running around. Um, <laughs> so, we want to put this event center together, but we want to give it a museum feel. So, we want to hang up lots of original art and uh, big fancy statues like the Sideshow brands and uh, so the contractor right now is putting all the bids together to build these giant frame shelves that will display all this stuff. They'll be fully lit. It's going to be pretty awesome. That so, sounds amazing. Um, and hopefully by then the pandemic will be over. We've got our vaccine widely distributed and then uh, cons and travel are back on. Can't wait. <laughs> correct. Cause that would, how does that work in Hawaii? Um, Cause I know from the U S I was able to, I just went to go see JP this weekend in California, drove across four States. No problem. Are you allowed to fly into the States? Are you treated like international situations? Uh, well, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure what the latest is because like for us, we just decided it's not safe to travel. Like that's a terrible risk to go to an airport and be in a, you know, a, a giant flying uh, <laughs> tube. <laughs> with right. god knows who uh so i haven't really checked we did relatively recently go to a neighboring island on a plane so you're definitely allowed to do that um the numbers have ticked up a little bit recently so i'm not going to be doing that 
anytime soon again. I don't know. I guess the, the short answer is, I don't know. And at various times there have been two week quarantines. So it's like, you want to get stuck somewhere for two weeks? No, thank you. <laughs> Unless you're going to Hawaii. You <laughs> want to get stuck there for two weeks. Well, on the on the one hand, things are sort of open, like Waikiki is all shut down completely, but most of the rest of the island, unlike Maui, is open. Like you can go to restaurants and, you know, that kind of thing. You can't go to a lot of the touristy things. That's all closed. But you can go to beaches. Um, so on the one hand, like, yay. But on the other on the other hand, I'm like, I'm not encouraging people to do that because like we, re we really would prefer not to have a big outbreak. Yeah, it's, it's I'm ready for it all to be over for sure. I'm we were looking at all the conventions that uh, are, I mean, was it this week or next week that was supposed to be San Diego? I think it was oh. last week that it was supposed to be San Diego. And then they're doing their video yeah. thing this week. Yeah, it was supposed to be last That's week. right. Yeah, so, it must be around now. I'm, I'm, so I'm sitting there in Oceanside with, with JP hanging out, and I'm like, I'm supposed to be a San Diego comic. I know. Nothing uh, feels right with this. Well, you never know. You could have been in the same place because I'm so close to it. That's true. You're like, what, 45 minutes north of San Diego? Yeah. So. As the traffic flows. As the traffic goes and flows. <laughs> which nobody cares in California. That's the one thing I learned about the pandemic. Like, all the officials care, but walking around out there, nobody cares. Nobody wears masks. Nobody does any of that stuff, so. I do. Ah, what a bummer. We could, they, they say, like, it could be over so quickly if everyone just wore a mask. Right. Give me my comic book conventions back. Wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have any, uh, before we get, get going, do you have any uh, signings coming up or do you have anything coming up that people can still get your signature even though there's no conventions? Um, well, uh, definitely I've been in touch with several um, uh, signature greater uh, operations. Uh, so recently I, I signed a pack for... Uh, David uh, Basildua's company, and we we're doing something with Alpha and Omega as well. I think that's being organized right this right as we speak. Um, so they're they're sort of small batches of sightings that you know different collectors might be aware of. I announce them when they come up on my Instagram. So if you are in the market for signings, uh, you can check that. What about what about you guys? Do you guys organize signings for particular books like this one? The, the reason why I asked the questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We ah. love signing with you. Yeah, we are a um, uh, full blown CGC facilitator, so we can definitely send over stuff to you and all that kind of stuff. So that's a good reason why. Perfect. I asked the questions. Oh, perfect. Well, if uh, th then that's going to be the way to do it. If people want signatures for this book, uh, there are no cons. Like, definitely go through you guys to get that stuff. So, uh, What's your next cereal box? Any is it still Batman Adventures? Um, we are hopefully doing uh, a. I, I'm not. I don't want to spoil anything, but we we, sh anything. we should have a. We should have another one. <laughs> uh, hopefully, uh, yeah. I don't know what, what I'm supposed to say, but uh, cool. it, they've been popular. It'd be crazy not to do another one. So uh, I think people can wisely expect that we may do another one soon. <laughs> Y'all would now be all have that concept and that idea. I mean, if Marvel ever went back and did X Men '92 again, yeah, like the, the cartoon style or X Men Adventures, that would just translate so well. Over oh to my that god! Book as well, yeah, the third one you did with for Harley on the yeah, book, that one was my favorite so far that you've done. Thanks. Yeah, that was pretty. It looked pretty good. I like that one. Yeah, I, I think. What you said before about it tying into that nostalgia about having your breakfast cereal in front of the Fox Kids, you know, cartoon show or whatever, that really does feel like the sweet spot for it. So anything that makes the, the book feel that way uh, is probably a good thing. Although, you know, we don't draw it that way necessarily. Like none of them, these have ever been drawn with like a very cartoony style. So I don't know. I mean, it, is it is it does it feel like a plus up to have it in a modern painted comic style or would it be interesting to try something that feels a little more animated i'm not sure i, I think there's an argument to be made either way you just go tell the sanctum people to do like art germ did and just go back and do uh, a vintage version oh two different styles interesting yeah <laughs> like a, 
what was his what it was his Wonder Woman that had two different color styles oh, yeah. to it. Mm-hmm. Like the line art was the same, but he went and recolored it like it was the golden age. Yeah, yeah so, I know what you mean. Really so just go tell Sanctum that that's what y'all need to do because I think that would be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sanctum, uh, I'm going to tell you how to run your business. Check this out. <laughs> oh, man, they're great over there. We, we've enjoyed watching all the covers they put out. So um, they're one of the stores that we watched. Uh, they started shortly after us on the exclusive stuff. So it's been fun watching them grow into their, their stuff. Hey, look, Surrey went off because I said an S word. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's been really nice watching all of you guys uh, grow. When I go to conventions and see the you know, the unknown comics booth, uh, it's just so cool. It's like a destination. All the, the wall of interesting products that you guys kind of invented. I haven't seen anyone do that before where there's like literally, you know, the, the t-shirt guys do it and some poster guys do it, but I've never seen that done with variant covers. So that has been really cool. Good yeah. job, you guys. Thank you, because we, we look, conventions are the place that we can put those books out, all these books that all of you guys work all this hard time on, and we can put it in one place in front of everybody, and it spots lights the, the, the artists, and it really shows how talented all these artists are. Um, I love comic book art. I've read comics since I was 11. Uh, of course, it was X-Men. Executioner Songs was my first storyline ever that I collected. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was right there in that, that reboot era. Um, but what always captured me was the covers. Like, I got out of collecting comics for about a year and a half when uh, um, in my early 20s. And it was, a, it was an Adam Kubert cover that got me back in. I was just walking around because I used to do tabletop gaming, and I still did that. And there was just this purple team X-Men cover. It just called me back in. and. Mm. So I, I blame getting back into comics on Andy Kubert. So, because his cover captured me. So. I'm with you. Like, uh, I, I buy a lot of books for stories, but I also buy a lot of books just because of the cover, and I couldn't care less about the story. Um, I call it market research and tax deductibility. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we know you're a busy guy, um, and we appreciate the time. You spent about half an hour. We appreciate your time. Um, we look forward to more covers because I think it's going to be awesome. Um, I'm glad we already have some stuff, uh, ideas. Um, I can't wait until the fall. So um, thank you for all you do. Thanks for all the great covers that you do. Um, it's always fun to get to, to watch your stuff pop up, whether it be through, you know, Sanctum, KRS, or even some of the just stuff you do with Marvel and DC. Um, not to mention your toy stuff. All those action hey. figure boxes you do. <laughs> I mean, you're a pretty dude. Just as a small rabbit trail, you you showed like last week or the week before on your Instagram where you did all of the the new X Men Legends box set images. That's just crazy. It's a gift. It's like sometimes the art gods are nice to me and they let me do something really cool like that. I mean, I never expected in my wildest dreams to do lines of toy illustrations, but it's like one of the most fun jobs I have now. And uh, anytime they offer, it's uh, it's a pretty easy yes for me. I, I love doing it. Well, most people don't uh, realize how often they get to see your work on mobile games or different things that they play. So, I mean, because you have such a big hand and all that kind of stuff too, or you had, I don't know if you're still doing a whole lot of that anymore, but I know you did at one point, so. It's it shifted. I, I definitely did, you know, a good 12 years in the video game industry and four different companies and, you know, five, six, seven different titles out there. So. Some people definitely, you know, will tell me they, they played and enjoyed the game and knew I worked on it. But I got to admit, like, the reason I, I don't do as much of that anymore is you would, you would work on a game for, like, two years, and then you would put it out, and you would be excited to post it on Instagram, and you would, and then it'd be like, meh. <laughs> people, for some reason, don't think of that as a, as a thing that's created by a person. You know, they think of it as, as a thing that's created by a studio. And so it's, uh, it's maybe a little less artistically fulfilling for me than, you know, doing comic book stuff where there's a culture of, you know, you know, I have the artists that I love and I follow them and I just care about what they do and I'm familiar with them as individuals and that just doesn't really exist in the video game space uh, right now. So for me, it's just way more fulfilling maybe to do the, uh, the toys and the, the comic stuff. 
Awesome. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. John Paul, you have anything else you want to throw in there? You sat there quietly drinking your energy drinks. So I know you've got some I was, energy. I was hanging out with David, uh, one of the, I forgot which convention, but he got this t-shirt. Was it from Upper Deck or something? <laughs> that pink one? And so like, I went there and got one too, but it was only for the workers, but it had his art. I, was, I thought I had it here, but I don't know. I, David, yeah, wanna... man. It was uh, it was San Diego, and it would they only had a few, you know, these shirts. It was a Deadpool, uh, Deadpool design that we had done, and uh, somehow, man, you you did it. You talked your way into a shirt. Like a whole bunch of people asked me, "How do I buy that? How do I get that?" I'm like, "You can't." <laughs> but JP ends up with one. You win. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I had it here. I saw it the other day. I should I should have had it ready. Um, <laughs> but the only thing is, like, I could say is that, uh, you know, definitely you're one of my favorite artists. Uh, always oh, have been. I'm very much on the, uh, I like dynamic art, and you're like the definition of dynamic art, uh, you know, in motion. And I feel like that's what captures um, the image first, is you go with energy uh, and that's basically it uh, oh my gosh I'm well, super happy that we have a cover with you like uh, uh some of my other friends or uh workers or partners have always been like hey you should work with david you should work with david nakayama i was like no oh. i was like i don't know when things come up i don't know you know and then finally <laughs> there it's like oh we have this cover i was like oh and then he showed me this i was like holy crap so good so i just want to oh say thank you well and, thank you for saying yeah. that wow your, your check is totally in the mail i uh, really <laughs> <laughs> appreciate that man <laughs> it's honored and, and yes darren likes to collect original art but if he passes on it like there's I'm, no I'm original so jp there's no original so if you could <laughs> he, he probably would have took the wolverine i could have took the emma frost you know <laughs> like <laughs> the original the original thing is coming like in the last year i i went from you know previous years doing no originals at all to, I, I bought all the equipment, I have the large scale printer, you know, like I, I, uh, I have the infrastructure to do it and ended up doing about, uh, I don't know, like 10, you know, originals last year, you know, just sort of cherry picking projects that I, I knew I could do very well and that people would want. Um, and so I'm getting more comfortable with it and I know how to do it now. It's not like a scary proposition. So for, for things like this, this, this is the kind of thing that could have been an original. So you look forward to more of those. And there's two. One could have been for Darren. One could have been for me or Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much work, like repeating the same pose twice. That, that'd be hard to do, but certainly one of them. <laughs> Hopefully these make it into your, uh, your print setup for the next convention season. And we can get some prints to hang up in the store. So. Oh, I'll definitely get you some of those. It, it, it feels like a no brainer. I, the reaction, you never know, you know, really, you really don't like when you make something, it, you finish the thing and it could be like, oh man, that didn't work out at all. And then it ends up being like the most popular thing you ever did. Or like you do something uh, on the other side, like this is the best thing I've ever done. And then it doesn't do as much as you, as you think. So you really never know. I've learned to, to just hold my breath and wait for, for the reaction. So when you got something like this and people are doing, at, you know, uh, articles about it just because, you know, they're that psyched and, you know, people sharing it like crazy, uh, I, you never expect that, but I'm really glad it happened in this situation. Me too, because we did a paid promotion through Instagram, and yeah. I think it ended today, and it had 19,000 likes on it by the end of two days. Jesus Christ. Um, Hard we've, never, we've never had that. <laughs> we've never had more than like 10,000 likes, and it had 18,000 plus likes on the paid promotion. And that was before we had the Wolverine to show up. Yeah, that was before the Wolverine. So. <laughs> Holy wow. crap. And as well, we that, and as we posted the Wolverine, all of a sudden our website is uh, picked up again. So people are already going out and picking it up on the website. So JP, don't forget to drop your website as well, so people know because we'll be at the Virgin soon. S L H L A dot com. So copy that unknown comic books, and then S L H L A dot com. <laughs> yeah. And if you're in the Greater North, you can get it from Comic Trader, Com which is in Canada. Yeah. Like that, Steve. Trying to cover the whole world with our exclusives quickly. We have, we have, dealers, we have dealers that bought into this project in uh, Asia, England. Um, so it's it's going to be well distributed. So a lot of people are going to get to see the art. So 
That is perfect. Perfect storm. It, it all, sometimes it works out. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, David, we truly appreciate your time and everything that you do. We look forward to future projects. And uh, just have a good day, sir. Honored to work with you guys. Thanks for having me on the show. I love talking with you. Yes. Yeah. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, indeed. Aloha. <laughs> See you guys later. later. Bye.